So this July 2020 for Aquarius Risings has another emphasis on alone time, which I know has been a theme throughout the past few years of really going in and doing some mental health journeying. And this being a final reprisal of setting the foundation internally for that manifestation of maturity and responsibility in the months and years to come. If you are excited to dive into what the astrology, what the tarot, and what the oracle deck cards have to say about what's in store for you for this July 2020, make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you are always up to date with what the stars have in store for you. This video is also brought to you by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an online service connecting you with licensed therapists that you can connect with online via your phone, your mobile device, your tablet, your computer, and speak with them over text, phone call, or even video chat. When you go to sign up at this link, you can be matched with a counselor in under 24 hours. And being part of BetterHelp includes weekly group in our sessions where you get to speak with other members about topics such as relationships and anxiety and how to best manage those. BetterHelp is available worldwide and costs $65 a week, though financial aid is available for those who qualify. BetterHelp is not a crisis hotline, but there are resources for that below. So if you are looking to go ahead and get started, feel free to sign up at the link below. Once you head to that link, you'll be taken to a really simple sign up process where you'll walk through exactly what you need to fill out to find your ideal therapist. And once you go through this, you can be matched in just under 24 hours. Hi, I'm Marin. I am a professional astrologer, philosophy student, and author. I combine traditional Hellenistic astrological techniques with modern psychological counseling dynamics in order to provide grounded spiritual guidance. Starting out right on the first of the month, Saturn is retrograding back into Capricorn. So recently Saturn entered your Aquarius first house. I have a full video on this three year long transit of Saturn in Aquarius, but because Saturn stationed retrograde in its cycle fairly early in Aquarius, Aquarius, it's retrograding back into your Capricorn 12th house. You got a taste of what Saturn in your first house feels like with the responsibility, with the stepping into sobriety, with the like, oof, I have responsibility on my shoulders. But Saturn is re-entering your Capricorn 12th house, where for the past three years, there's been challenges around self-destructive habits, limitations around your mental states and psychological getting to the bottom of things. This re-entering of Saturn into Capricorn is not so much newness around those things or new difficulties, more so bringing back up that in which needs to have the ties cut, that in which needs to have the bow tied on top and getting to the bottom of these things and one final reprisal or evening out the kinks that you're still closing up around those matters. On the 5th, there is then a lunar eclipse at 13 degrees of Capricorn, lighting up your 12th house, 6th house axis. There is a full video on this dramatic lunation down below, which for you is a final cataclysmic six month declaration of what you are fully letting yourself feel uncomfortable about in terms of mental states. This has the moon in Capricorn in its fall, lighting up or in its exile, lighting up the discomfort, the difficulties or the obstacles that you are going head into facing in your mental world because you know that it's lighting up some new light at the end of the tunnel in your physical world. You really are seeing that, whoa, when I change these like mindset shifts or how I'm spending my alone time, it's going to open up some like cool physical well-being things or relationships with those I work with that is supportive for me in more tangible manifest ways. On the 12th, Mercury is then stationing direct at five degrees of Cancer in your sixth house. So there's a focus here on forging newness and new comfort in your sixth house of illness, health, and coworkers. So with Mercury having been retrograde, there was a taking back to look at things in terms of that area of your life. There's a full video on this Mercury retrograde down below if you're interested, but there were feelings of feeling emotionally victimized or bottling things up, particularly around your health or your illness 
illness or those that you work with. Whereas now that Mercury is direct, you are letting yourself be known in a way that is emotionally charged around health, around illness, or around coworker environments. Do watch out for being somewhat, um, somewhat emotionally provocative just for the sake of getting yourself heard. This is in the most part a positive alignment that you are letting your voice be heard and that's great and you're moving forward instead of bottling things up, but do be wary about rushing into speaking your truth. On the 20th, there is a new moon in Cancer in your sixth house, a new beginning around illness, health, or coworkers where you are setting the stage for what you want to attract, but this is in direct conversation with some difficulties regarding mental health, self-destructive habits, or like being alone. So even though this is a new moon that wants to be all new and cozy and feeling safe, like I described in the video I have on this link down below, it is directly tying into this awareness of new finalizing limitations that you are powering through in that internal world. On the 22nd, the sun is entering your Leo seventh house. So for the next few weeks, the Leo sun is lighting up your seventh house of relationships and partnerships as something that is more in your day-to-day -day mind. It's a nice switch from some of the really heavy, deep shit into the more lighter, like other people-oriented shit. So, you know, that's to look forward to as we move into August and Leo season. And then July culminates on the 27th with Jupiter in Capricorn, sextiling Neptune in Pisces. The Jupiter Neptune sextile is a year-long outer planet transit kind of in the background sextiles aren't very powerful but amidst a lot of the more difficult aspects it is kind of a little light at the end of the tunnel saving grace in the back burner indicating that the intense growth dedication and like really getting to the bottom of your mental states that you are putting in right now is opening up some financial growth and opportunity. There is this little bit of like when I have my mindset in check, I tend to attract and make more money going on there in the back burner that is making itself more known in the forefront here. So that this month is a really final blast of energy of looking internally as the next few months and years have a huge focus on you manifesting that directly externally. So with that being said, let's pull a tarot card for Aquarius Risings for July and see what comes up. We have the Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands directly relates to who is providing inspiration, lighting up, and getting getting fulfillment for your creativity based on a nurturing environment outside of you. This might represent that there's someone in your life who's really nurturing and uplifting and is there to empower you. Like you're feeling quite alone or quite like you're really getting down and dirty with your demons right now. And there is someone who has your best interest, who is supporting you through this, who has as your back that is reminding you all that you contain in power and in glory and with that let's pull a law of attraction card because I think that for you there's particular mental momentum that's happening in order to manifest externally so let's pull the law of attraction card for Aquarius Risings. I can focus specifically upon what I want. You are bombarded by thought stimulation. And so, unless you give your attention to what you specifically want, you can be influenced by that which surrounds you. Unless you are focusing on what is important to you, you can be stimulated by others' thoughts which may or may not be important to you. So with this 12th house energy of this month, you're reminded to go back within, to set the standard for your life. It depends on you setting the standard, not on depending on someone else, not on looking to your external environment, to declaring what you desire based on the mindset that can imagine that. Defining that in which you want based on what you want and reconnecting with what that looks like really honestly on the internal basis this July. If you enjoy this and you would like to check out my private astrology consultations, you can check out everything in the description along with everything for Rashi, which is my platform connecting spiritual practitioners with their ideal clients. So if you are a metaphysical professional like a healer, a diviner, a yoga teacher, and you're looking to post your services online, you can check that out down below. And also if you're searching for those, it's a great way to connect. The link for BetterHelp is down below if you're interested in starting that. And otherwise, make sure that you like, subscribe, and let me know down below how you're feeling about this July as we enter anything that's coming up throughout the month. I would love to hear from you. Sending so much love, and I will see you in the next one. There is one thing you're all